valued viewers. I hope you're all doing very well. And a very special shout out to my Super Thanks contributor, at Paul from Chicago. And because he contributed $20 or more to the channel's efforts, he is elected to do a custom video. And his choice was the Chicago Northwestern's E4 Hudson. And a gentle reminder that if you would like a custom video done, all you have to do is hit the Super Thanks button next to the Like button on the taskbar and contribute $20 or more to the channel's efforts and go to the comments of that video and tell me what you want done. And I do it as a priority over any project that I am doing. Now on with the video. Enjoy. First, you really can't talk about the Chicago Northwestern's version of this locomotive without first discussing where the locomotive originated from. And the 464 Hudson was synonymous with the New York Central Railroad. And they developed the design in the mid-1920s during the height of the superpower era. It was also the New York Central that gave the 464 its classic nickname of Hudson. And also the famous streamlining that was uh, put onto the design by Henry Dreyfus for the railroad's regal passenger train to 20th Century Limited. The development of the Hudson was due to a need by the New York Central for a more powerful steamer to haul its passenger trains since by the 1920s, its fleet of Pacifics could simply no longer handle the increasingly larger and heavier trains. The highly successful wheel arrangement led to the railroad rostering nearly 300 464s and overall almost two dozen other lines went on to own at least one. Today, several Hudsons remain preserved and surprisingly a handful are either operational or under restoration. And one of the railroads who deployed these 464 Hudsons was the Chicago and Northwestern Railway. The Great Depression forced the Chicago Northwestern into bankruptcy. And the railroad, whether interested or not, was nevertheless caught up in the nationwide fervor. Union Pacific unveiled the first ever such train set in February of 1934, followed by the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy a few months later. And of course, the Milwaukee Road was inter uh, introducing streamlined services with its Hiawatha trains. And these new streamlined contraptions were a stark change from the traditional drab, colorless, and utilitarian appearance trains had always employed. And the public at large was duly impressed with the new streamliner craze that was underway. Realizing that they were onto something, officials at the Union Pacific wanted to launch a transcontinental service to Chicago. And since the Chicago Northwestern had long worked with the Union Pacific in its Windy City Gateway, it agreed to this new service. Despite it being in bankruptcy, the Chicago Northwestern, in an effort to keep up, began upgrading its main line for high-speed operations. And to heighten this desire by the Chicago Northwestern, it came the realization that its Chicago and Twin Cities route was in direct competition with the Milwaukee roads. And since the Chicago to Twin Cities route was roughly 400 miles and the service scheduled for around 400 minutes, the new train was given the name 400. A big fly in the ointment for the Chicago Northwestern was that this new route was not originally streamlined and that was due in part to its ongoing financial situation and the railroad had to utilize a quartet of overhauled, non-shrouded 462 Pacifics and they were the original E2As. To increase their speed, the Pacifics were rebuilt as oil burners and given larger driving wheels and they carried bigger tenders among their more notable improvements. And in addition, heavyweight cars were upgraded with better suspension and other perks. The 400 officially launched on January 2nd of 1935 and proved successful enough that the new streamlined equipment and sleek Electromotive's E3s arrived in 1939. Eventually, a fleet of 400s was unveiled across the Midwest, and surprisingly, they were actually not the Chicago Northwest official introduction to the streamliner age, and that belonged to the Class E4 464 Hudson. And so the Chicago Northwestern's Class E4 were nine streamlined 464 Hudson steam locomotives that were built in 1937 by the American Locomotive Company. And not coincidentally, the design of these looks an awful lot like the Milwaukee Rose Class F7s, otherwise known as the Hiawathas. And not only that, the nine E4s were almost identical in specification and purpose to the Milwaukee Rose design. And they were built by the same builder, Alco, at the same time too. Yet their streamlined designs were slightly different. The only visual difference between the two were basically just a slight difference in streamlining that the E4s had versus the Hiawathas. 
And of course, these new E4464 Hudsons were designed by the railroad to run specifically the, their famous 400 Express passenger train that was directly competing against the Milwaukee Roads Hiawathas. But before they were even delivered, the railroad's management decided that streamlining steam was the wrong direction and instead placed orders with the General Motors Electric Motor Division for E3 diesel locomotives. So you could say that the E4 design was basically a knee-jerk reaction by the Chicago Northwestern to basically build a streamlined steam locomotive that competes against the likes of the Milwaukee Road or the Burlington Zephyr uh, diesel locomotives. And quite frankly, this is a mistake that many Class 1 railroads in North America made in deciding you know, their fleet of locomotives and what to do with them was direct competition against competitors, in this case, the Milwaukee Road and the Burlington specifically. And it's simply a mistake that a company or a railroad like the Chicago Northwestern cannot make because they're already in bankruptcy. So instead of heading up the famous 400 Express passenger route, these relatively new 464 Hudsons instead were pulling secondary passenger trains until they were withdrawn from service between 1953 and 1956. And consequently, that's when the scrapping of the fleet of nine Hudsons began, and only two of them survived that initial wave of scrapping, and that was the number 4008 and the 4009. And they were kept in Escanaba, Michigan, to thaw frozen ore with the heat from their boilers. In August of 1961, the numbers 4008 and 4009 were replaced by a new infrared process. And since both E4s had actually been welded to the railroad tracks, the Chicago Northwestern crews had to scrap them on site. So as you now know, the E4 Hudsons on the Chicago Northwestern never really did the work that they were designed to do. And that's really most unfortunate, too, because these E4 Hudsons, much like all the rest of the Hudsons, especially the streamlined ones from the New York Central, the Milwaukee's F7 Hiawathas, they were really attractive locomotives, and the paint scheme was really sharp as well. And then, of course, like most steam locomotives from that era, you know, innovative or not, they were all scrapped and none of them were preserved. So we really can't get a good look at what the Chicago Northwestern had with these E4 Hudsons. And as for the Chicago Northwestern themselves, post-World War II, new diesels continued streaming in during that period of time until steam had been retired completely on their lines by 1956. Unfortunately, this, pe this period began a long slide for the railroad. Without World War II traffic, its revenue ton miles dropped by $1 billion in just seven years between 1946 and 1953. And with an overbuilt network that totaled more than 9,400 miles, they decided to defer maintenance, and that was carried out in an attempt to cut cost. And of course, employing such a tactic is never a sound business strategy in the railroads long term, which actually costs each railroad who does this a lot more money doing it that way than if they would have just fixed the track and the locomotives and whatnot right up front. But basically, it's like robbing Peter to pay Paul at an absurd 50% interest rate. You know, that's almost like doing business that way. And of course, it got worse for the Chicago and Northwest also because the declining physical plant of its uh, structure caused the Union Pacific to switch its Chicago connection for passenger service to the Milwaukee Roads, and that was effective on October 30th of 1955. And by 1963, the Chicago Northwestern discontinued its Twin Cities 400, and the 400 name disappeared entirely by 1969. And with that, the following specifications apply to the Chicago Northwestern's Class E4464 Hudson steam locomotive. The locomotive length was 101 feet 9 and 3 quarters of an inch. The locomotive height was 15 feet 11 and 21 30 seconds of an inch. The locomotive weight was 412,000 pounds. The adhesive weight over the drivers was 216,000 pounds. The total weight with the tender was 791,500 pounds. It burned coal and then later uh, converted to oil in 1946 and 1947. The fuel Fuel capacity was 50,000 pounds of coal and then later 6,000 U.S. gallons of uh, fuel oil. The water capacity was 20,000 U.S. gallons. The firebox grade area was 90.7 square feet. The boiler pressure was 30, or I'm sorry, 300 PSI. And the total heating surface was 3,958 square feet. The main driver diag uh, diameter was 84 inches. 
The locomotive had two cylinders at 25 inches by 29 inches, and the class was E4. Nine were total built in 1937, and all of them were scrapped in between the years of 1953 and 1961. And with that, I shall wrap up the video. If you enjoyed the content today, please hit the like button. And also, if you've not subscribed, please hit just the subscribe button as both features, the like and the subscribe, help the channel grow immensely. And don't forget about uh, making a contribution to the channel's efforts by hitting the super thanks button as any contribution is greatly appreciated. And if you don't want to contribute that way, you can always visit our print shop at Nickel Plate Limited on Etsy.com. And we thank you once again.